I'm Ernest Nussbaum, and I designed the instrument that's now called the practice cello. Every cellist, or just about sooner or later, wishes they were something a little more easily transportable, especially nowadays with air travel, where if you want to take a regular cello on a flight, you have two options. One is to check it into baggage. Uh, the other alternative is to buy a seat. So uh, the idea is to have a practice instrument which is carry-on luggage and fits into an overhead compartment. I had studied civil engineering, which has very little to do with building instruments. It's just that about 30 years ago, for some reason or other, I started thinking it would be good if something like that existed. Uh, so I made several prototypes, eventually came up with the instrument, which has changed very little. It still looks pretty much uh, like it did 30 years ago, just some slight modifications. I took the, my regular cello, laid it on a piece of packing paper, and you prob may have noticed that the only place a cello touches you when you're playing it is small part touches you on the chest, and there's a part that touches the knees, and then I figured out ways of making those detachable and reattachable. And uh, after a while, it more or less came together. Even though there is not much of a body, it vibrates enough to have a, quite a difference on the sound. I do all the woodworking in our garage, which is not heated. So when the weather is like it is today, I don't do anything out there. My mother was a violinist. My father had been a conductor many years ago and was a very good pianist. So I grew up hearing a lot of chamber music. Uh, we were living in Germany at the time, but left in 39, just in time before the war started. One day, I uh, must have been 24, 25, I thought that if I was ever going to learn the cello, I shouldn't wait any longer. I never intended to uh, become a great musician. All I really wanted was to be able to play chamber music, string quartets, that sort of thing. And after a few years, I was able to start doing that. I'm almost 83. I have to keep reminding myself that Stradivari was still making violins and cellos when he was 90, which does not mean that I will still doing it when I was 90, but uh, he's a good example to show that you don't have to quit just because you're over 80. And uh, that's the gist of the story.